Right. The story of Marcel Kittel's career is one that climbed the highest peaks and plunged to the deepest lows. Kittel now, beginning to open up his sprint, he hits the front, the big German goes! The German sprinter shocked the world of cycling almost a year ago, stepping off the bike at the age of 30. Straight to the line, and here comes Kittel! Cycling was confronted not for the first time with the enormous psychological pressure it puts on its poster boys like Marcel Kittel. I think I actually really realized that I um, yeah, maybe could have the talent um, to become a professional cyclist uh, when I won the first time the World Championships in the Juniors in the time trial. That's a moment where you yeah, start to believe in it more and more. You're still maybe not sure if you could make it, but um, at least it's a first good step, I think. I always needed someone who gave me that yeah, little kick to, to really go for it. And um, that actually happened then when I came uh, to Ski Shimano uh, in my first year professional, where, where the team said, OK, we, we also still believe that you are a good sprinter. And yeah, from there on, things changed again, uh, away from the time trial more to the sprint. Kittel progressed rapidly once he stepped up to the top level. After winning his first Grand Tour stage at the 2011 Vuelta, he backed it up with his first big one-day race the next year, Schilderbris. Tyler Ferrari knows his finish, here comes Cattell over the top. Tyler Ferrari and Cattell, Taylor Boss on the right. Marcel Cattell, here comes Cattell down the zone. Guardini is up there, Tyler Ferrari and Cattell throw the bike of the line. It looks like Cattell takes it for Argos. It would be the first of many big wins for Kittel over the coming three years. His four stage wins in the 2013 Tour de France placed the then 25-year-old firmly at the top of the sport. Of course, I, uh, I see and I know and I feel that um, people expect this year more, or maybe the same at least, and uh, that they are also more quick disappointed and um, I'm aware of it but it's not that I'm riding now on my bike and I think oh, damn, you really have to you have to do something you know they are expecting now I don't know four stage wins again or whatever that's not my ambition and that's not uh, clearly not the goal for this is to the France. Goal or not Kittel would win four tour stages again in 2014 and it didn't end there. Giant Shimano fighting to take control, all around Marcel Kittel. And Kittel comes to the fore, the big man! Kittel straight through the middle of the minute. And here comes Kittel! Oh, he takes it on the line! It's going to be Kittel, Kittel by a long way! Oh, there's none bigger at the moment, out of absolutely nowhere, like a bolt of lightning, he delivers, what a guy! The following year would prove to be an annus horribilis. In a season plagued by illness and injury, Kittel could only add one race victory to his tally. Well, you doubt everything. So uh, I think that's, that's also quite normal for someone um, like me. In the years before, I was always used to winning. Everything was going smooth. I never had a real big injury or something. Um, and uh, yeah, then there was that year 2015 and nothing uh, was good uh, anymore, like I was used to it. And yeah, then, then you start to, to think about it, of course, um, and ask yourself, yeah, why is that now? And how can I get it uh, right again? By the end of the season, Kittel and Giant Alpecin parted ways. Luckily, he would find refuge with one of the godfathers of modern cycling and a team renowned for delivering wins. Yeah. How the sensation is at the moment? Not good. Before was better. <laughs> no, it's all right. Good times on the bike with the group. I understood, of course, as an old fox, 
uh, that we had to be very prudent with them. And I think I did a very good move to say, listen, Marcel, it is not interesting if you're winning or not. You have to find back your uh, your pleasure in cycling. We brought them to Dubai. We, we said, we're going to try a sprint. If it's OK, it's OK. If it's not OK, don't worry. He won the first race. He won the second race. He won the GC. And he was back. Awesome. I'm really, really happy, seriously. I was uh, yesterday dreaming already about this moment, uh, and I really, really wanted this. With Etik's quick step in 2016, Kittle showed he was still the best sprinter in the world. It's Kittle versus Cavendish on the left look out the right, but it's Kittle all the way. Cavendish is there. Marcel Kittle makes history. He's the record man in Skelda Prey's history. I think, still think that he was probably in these years the fastest rider in the bench. Power-wise, I think he was he was one of the best. Uh, he, had, he had a lot of power, which he needed because his, his aerodynamics wasn't that that good. I mean, uh, he was a big boy, so once he got out of the saddle, he took a lot of wind, but he he, he had the power just just to build up the speed with it. And then at that period, I think he was he was the best. He really, yeah. He had a, that acceleration, but also the distance to make it. He could easily go from 300 and then he kill everybody. Twenty sixteen turned into his best season yet, but with the glory came a return of media interest and even more pressure. As a sprinter, you you always. Um, have a have pressure when you when when there is a stage that you can maybe win or a race that you can win so you have a lot of moments and opportunities to to go for a victory as a person you just sometimes need moments to yeah that you have for yourself um, at races of course it's it's more things now that that come together there of course the expectations to perform good um, as a rider there but also um, people would like to interact with you. They would like to get in contact. To they, they, yeah, they would be happy if you get, if they can get a signature or anything, or a picture. So um, you try to find a good balance between it, and sometimes that's not easy, and sometimes it's also too much. Yeah, I got I got numbers in my jersey pockets, um, so it's yeah. It's crazy. One guy tried to sell his sister to me, so it's really... People are sometimes actually awkward uh, with that, but um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I try to do it as good as possible, but sometimes I also just need my moments um, where, I'm, where I'm not up for it and I just want to have a yeah, private time. Kittel continued his good form in 2017, which he again started in Dubai. Another five wins at the Tour would follow, bringing his grand total to 14. I, I do not race for any records. I don't want to, to, um, yeah, to, to set records. And that, I mean, if it happens, of course, I, I would be very happy to, to reach a certain amount of, I don't know, stages, but it's not that... Um, my priority. I mean, for me, like I said before, the process of getting to, to a highlight like the Tour de France, for example, is much more important than uh, and making it successful in the end than, um, than finishing my, my career with a certain amount of stages. I think that's then, that's the first moment then, actually, when you finish your career, to look back on, on and maybe sum it up and um, calculate what you actually achieved. And maybe it is a record, maybe not, but I think it's not the way how we should uh, judge about a career if it was successful or not. His team, however, had another sprint talent waiting for his moment in the spotlight. It's opening up dead centre. This is going to be a phenomenal win. What about that? Kabiria gets it up the line. Four stage wins in his first Grand Tour. What a phenomenon 22-year-old Fernando Gaviria is. With Gaviria in the ascendancy at quick step, Kittel left for Katusha Alpesin in 2018. Despite two early season wins at Tirreno Adriatico, all was not well. 
This is Marcel Kittel with a mechanical. And sometimes we know that in these situations, it doesn't cope particularly well. Oh, Kittel, it's gone to his head. Cannot keep up with the man in front, Niels Pollitt. Oh, goodbye, Marcel Kittel. He will not be winning a 6 Cell de Brest today. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Not a day for Marcel Kittel. I was very sad when he left the team. Uh, and unfortunately for him, he did a very wrong choice to go to Katusha because he came from a very well-structured team to a team who was losing a little bit the direction. In his last season, the German would win only one race. In May 2019, Kittel and Katusha Alpesin parted ways by mutual consent. That August, he announced his retirement from the sport. When I will finish my career in, in some years, um, and then I, and, and, and if I look back then, then um, I will see if I was capable of it. I, I do not compare myself also to other riders. I think everyone is, is special for, uh, in his own way. And um, of course, you, you see that also in the victories. So um, for me, it's also, it makes no sense in the end to compare yourself. Uh, yeah, to other records because you're, yeah, you're special in your own way.